Control Tower, this is Mike Alpha X-Ray Papa Sierra Victor Romeo, ready for takeoff. Roger that, Mike Alpha X-Ray, it's this guy from the lights of green. You are clear for takeoff. Happy hunting. I hear that. Roger, over and out. Hi, greetings and welcome fellow pilots out there. Today we are going to be reviewing Ace Combat 7 VR section. And yes, we're going to be doing this like this. So I've got my notes to go through as we go through this uh, review. Now Ace Combat 7 uh, is mainly a non-VR game, but we are not paying attention to that. This entire review is about the VR element of the of the game, not the storyline or the uh, or the multiplayer, just the VR headset section. Now, a lot of people have come to us and complained, "Hey, the VR section is only like three mi uh, three missions, and someone completed it in what like forty five minutes." He actually took about an hour. I timed it, <laughs> um, but yeah, there is. That's correct. It is only three uh, three missions long, but it has got a massive amount of replayability in this game. Simply because not only do you have the three missions, but there are lots of weapons that you unlock for each individual plane, and there are a lot of different planes to unlock. I mean, you get three. Uh, sorry, you got four airplanes in total that you can unlock and each one of those planes has got two or three different uh, types of weapon systems that you can unlock giving out each different style of gameplay with each uh, element well, sorry, with each airplane and also with each uh, missile weapon system that you unlock as well now when you look inside the airplanes themselves the airplanes themselves have a different cockpit different layout and different characteristics, as I said, different game, uh, different gameplay styles. So this review is going to be looking at the missions, the maps, the weapons, and the airplanes, all in it, all in comprehensive review, as well as all the extras that come along with it, such as the free flight and all uh, free flight and um, uh, air show. So, up over here, you. Let's get on with it. Ah, the maps. Sorry, now I'm just reading the notes. The maps. There are currently three maps, each given their own style, characteristics, and enemies. Mission one. This map helps you to get used to the airplane and the feel of being inside the cockpit for the first time. Although it's just a few islands out at sea, it gives you a few moments to, and allows you to take your time, relax, and enjoy the moments while settling in. Combat actually starts when you fly over to the target area where you engage in air-to-air -air combat. Once all the enemy airplanes have been destroyed or defeated, you will then have to land on the aircraft carrier or airport, depending on which plane you use to take off. Both the airport and aircraft carrier are near each other and you can see them both when free flying around the start of the mission. Can you? I think I actually, I uh, might need to double check that last bit because I think I tried again and if you take off from the runway you can't see the, uh, you can't see the airport, uh, sorry, I'm afraid that, if you take off from the runway you can't see the aircraft carrier, but if you take off from the aircraft carrier you, you can see the runway, so depending on which plane you got, there you go. Mission 2, 
This kicks it up a notch as you are thrown right into the thick of it before you even take off. As you emerge from the hangar, you are greeted with a scene right out of a wartime action movie, with AA guns blazing, a deadly battle playing over your head, and aircraft blowing up left, right and centre. You make your way over to the runway and take off as soon as possible and fly right into the fight. Although this map starts off with air combat, this map mostly focuses on ground assault. Once you have cleared out the enemy planes, your next objective will be to defend the nearby power plant that is currently under siege. This seems to be a defence mission, however, I do get the feeling that it is more of a timed mission, as you can still fail the mission as long as one enemy remains, no matter what it's doing. But this does sort of need further, engage, uh, further investigating, because I'm not quite sure. I have actually seen uh, one scene where the uh, I failed the mission when um, I was fight shooting down an enemy airplane and all that enemy airplane was doing was dodging me, um, and I still and I still failed the mission. So therefore, that's why I sort of believe that uh, it is a timed mission, not just a defence mission. Okay. Once you have taken out all the ground units, you will then be informed that this was a decoy and the real objective was your base. Here there will be a massive firefight of tanks, missile trucks, helicopters, SAM sites, howitzers, bombers, double A guns and fighter jets. You will need to be able to switch between ground assault and air com combat on the fly as a multi-role air support fighter. This, there will be another timed flight as you will need to defeat all opponents before the uh, the base is destroyed again it gives the appearance that it's a defensive um, a defensive battle with all like these tanks shooting at you or helicopters launching missiles or bombers doing their bombing run on the air base and the base coming up in smoke but like I said, I'm not too sure that this actually is a defence mission, but more of a, a timed mission. Because, as I said, it seems to be that even if one opponent is left, no matter what they are doing, you will still get, um, you will still get a failed mission uh, after a certain amount of time has passed. Both this has not been confirmed yet and I do need to do a little bit more investigation um, by actually timing it to see if it works and see if it is that but it's sort of a feeling that I have on this. Finally after you cleared out the last of the enemies you are given another opportunity to land on the runway. These landing sequences are skippable if you're not up to landing. Because um, sometimes landing is not, the thing, is not the thing for some people. So you can just press and hold option and you will skip the landing procedure a bit. But we like to do it anyway, just to see if we can do it. <laughs> okay. Next one. Mission 3. <laughs> Mission 3, the final mission is entirely air combat. This time you are greeted to a wonderful vista of flying over the mountain tops above the clouds. However, these clouds are as beautiful as they are dangerous. Close to the ground and surrounded by mountains. One wrong move and you could end up bouncing around like a pinball in a machine. Like a ball in a pinball machine, I mean. Yeah, get my... Oh. The mission starts off with your ground flying in. Sorry. This mission starts off with your group flying into an ambush, missiles flying everywhere, emerging out from an unseen source under the cloud base. Before you know it, the skies are filled with both enemy and allied airplanes dogfighting it out for survival and supremacy. Once you have taken them all out and it's clear skies around, or so it seems, until out of nowhere you are dive bombed by a squadron of elite stealth fighters. These fighters are tough to beat, hard as nails, incredibly maneuverable and hard to track. And even missiles have a tough time taking it out. However, I have worked out a slight trick that might help you out. Um, before they dive bomb you, 
uh, you, uh, so as soon as you hear from one of your co-pilots that he uh, that he saw something glittering hit the deck well not literally hit the deck but figuratively dive under the cloud base and fly as fast and as close to the ground as possible it may take a bit of skill to navigate the terrain and not fly into the sides of the mountains but i find that when you dive but when they dive bomb you half of them will dive straight into the ground a very satisfying experience when you start hearing all the explosions look and look around to see a fire erupting out of the cliff sides sorry <laughs> just want to just want to little, make a little note on that it was um basically one of the, the little playthroughs i did have of this i thought that uh well they seem when it when they start emerging they do actually come straight from the sky and dive bomb around you so i'm wondering if the game is programmed so that they do always dive bomb directly at you so using that to my advantage i thought well let's see what happens if i fly near uh near a mountain top um just for me to have a look around and i just say and i thought right half the squadron wiped out right there and it was a bit of an immense satisfaction when i saw that but there will still be the other half of the squadron left and these pilots are deadly they really even though you've taken out half of the half half of the squadron it was the easy half that you got you were, that was uh, cut out the remaining half <laughs> you will have a tough time beat it beating all right lastly here as you start picking them off one at a time i tend to find that the last two are the hardest to deal with because whilst you are chasing one, the other will always attempt to get behind you and lock on, forcing you to evac uh, ex evacuate, evacuate, execute. Sorry, get my words wrong. Get my words right. Ah. Forcing you to execute some evasive actions to evade their incoming missiles and lose your target. To finish them off, you may need to do a little bit of skillful maneuvering yourselves to get a good missile lock on. You will need to get behind one of them and fire when he's flying in a straight. After you have finished the last one off, then that's it. Just fly around a bit, listen to the pilots chatting to you about, chatting, chatting about you, chill out, relax, but do not, under any circumstances, die. Because I found out this the hard way. It was I was um, just playing around, uh, listening to um, listening to them uh, just say, "Oh yeah, real. He's the real deal. He's a real pilot. Yeah, it reminds me of blah 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 blah." Uh, and I was uh, just starting to, well, have my attention divided, and I ended up piling into the side of a mountain. Whoops! By accident. Um, so I thought, well, the mission had already passed, but no, it doesn't actually save it until the fade out is complete in fact even during the fade out in some places that is still not even completed because there was one there was actually one time when i tried landing on a runway before it actually got to the runway sequence uh, and it just faded out as i got to the runway uh, as it was black bang as i crashed right into the ground and then i had to do the entire mission all over again <laughs> well that checkpoint part of the mission all over again so yeah just because you think you're finished don't let up make sure you do survive until you get the game over screen or or uh, get uh, get the uh, the debrief screen but do not okay right okay so that's it for the uh, that's it for the maps now the airplanes and for all those that um yeah first okay so this section is all about the uh, the airplanes firstly to all those who have skipped to this point because of the uh, <laughs> the uh, menu options that i put down here or the data panel that i've got down here firstly all of you welcome to the show now onto the bit i am sure you're all here for the unlockable planes and their weapons 
Currently, at the moment of making this video, there are in total four airplanes you can fly. The F-18 Hornet, the Su-17, the A-10 Tank Buster, and finally, my favourite, the F-22A Stealth Fighter. <laughs> yes, I am still, for those who just skipped here, I am reading the script at the moment because there's a lot that I've written down <laughs> and I can't memorise it all and I want to make sure I've got everything in here. My three at the A2 Cell Fighter. As time goes by, there may be more VR com coming out, uh, at which time I will review and update you guys as, long, uh, as I go along. So please don't forget to subscribe to keep up and to up to date about this and other VR related content. Hey, I was going to do this as a voiceover, and you just have one screen with the with the graphics playing in the background. Um, <laughs> so. Doing, doing it in this style I thought would be a little bit better, so I do apologise if my, uh, my notes gets in the way of the camera. Ah, oh, correctly up on the audio. Okay, first up we have the F-18 Hornet. This is your starter plane and will come with just one weapon at, f at first, but as you play the missions you will unlock more. So far it looks like it is this unlocks one new item every time you fly. No matter what mission it is or what difficulty you're set to, you just have to complete them and get to the next unlockable. Sometimes it's weapons, sometimes it's planes, sometimes followed by ace difficulty level, free fly and air show. But each time, that you, uh, each time you fly and successfully complete a mission, you get a new thing unlocked. The first few unlockables are weapon unlocks to use in conjunction with mission 2 and 3. In the end you'll end up with three weapons for your starter plane and these are the QAAM, a single air-to-air lock-on missile, great for picking off targets one at a time. These fire and forget missiles can be launched and then switched to take a second target within range and fired again to take out two in one moment. Next is the LASM, the first unlock missile which is used for MAT-2. The LASM single air-to-surface missile, like the QAAM, you will swiftly take out two targets in one go, as they target ground units, unless something gets in the way or shot down, they seldom miss. A tactic I tend to employ for maximum damage is whilst these special missiles, missile missiles can take out a target in one hit, a standard missile needs two hits before destroying a target. So I would lock onto one target, fire a special missile, change to a second target, fire the second, then whilst these are reloading, switch over to the standard missiles and fire them both at a free tar third target for maximum impact before switching back to the, the special weapon. All right. Lastly for this plane is the EML Rao Gun. Although this unlocked for the first mission it is up to you if you want to use it or not as it involves a different playstyle. In a skilled pilot this can be quite deadly to both air and ground units. The way it works is that a large circle will appear on your front facing HUD uh, when a target moves inside and is within firing range, fire away to cause massive damage. However, this gun is forward facing like the machine gun and has a very narrow cone of effectiveness. Only use it if you are really confident in your piloting skills with this. Okay, on to the second plane to unlock. The second plane to unlock is the SU-30M2 or as I like to call it, the SU, for sure. Like the previous F-18, we looked at this as a multi-role fighter, but the weapons for this baby is especially devastating for both air and ground targets. The first missile, or the standard missile that it comes with, is the HPAA air-to-air -air missile, but this isn't much to write home about. 
Just like the F-18 initial starting special missile, this is a single lock-on fire and forget missile. Used primarily for mission one when you have nothing better to use. However, the SU's first unlockable missile that for AGM is where the fun starts. This air to ground missile can he use head tracking to lock on up to four targets at once. Then when fired, you will launch all four missiles simultaneously. If all four hit, you can still switch to the standard missile to launch both at a fifth target wreaking havoc, death and destruction to the enemy units. The next unlockable weapon is the 4AAM. Just like the 4AGM, this also uses head tracking to lock on up to four air targets at once. Each missile can take down a single plane on its own and you can fire up to four of these babies in one go. These are good when going up against large numbers of enemies and thinning the herds. The next plane to unlock is a unique design that many will recognize. The A-10 Tank Buster has a few names after it, such as the Thunderbolt and the Warthog. The A-10 primary role is ground suppression, with its main weapon, the Vulcan Cannon. This is the big brother and inspiration for the minigun. The minigun's name has always came into question. I mean, like, <laughs> if the gun's so massive, why is it called the minigun? That is because the original size is this badass Vulcan cannon they put onto the A-10. The military wanted to put it into the hands of their soldiers, but no human could ever ca carry it. So they cut it down to make a mini version of it, the minigun. This plane only has two other weapons in its arsenal that you can use, and that is the UGB unguided bomb and that is and that of the RKT rockets <laughs> the UGB is quite straightforward it's a bomb you drop it it explodes enough said well <laughs> that and the area of effectiveness is quite large and potent this can take out several units at once as long as they're in close proximity to each other, of course. The other weapon the A-10 uses is the RKT, or rocket, <laughs> like abbreviation of rocket. This is, this is like a standard rocket pod. It launches up to eight missiles consecutively. Each has a wide area of effect when impacting onto the ground and can be used to a devastating effect in the hands of skilled pilots. Lastly is my favourite on the list, the F-22A Stealth Fighter. This also has a very unique design with its diamond wing formation and sleek engine outline. Although the Stealth Factor doesn't actually stop stem sites and other aircraft from shooting missiles at you, this baby is very fast and very manoeuvrable. Another great feature of this craft is its complete open top design giving you greater visibility of the area around you than any of the other aircraft so far. Another unique design feature of this craft is that it has internal missile bays so that it can carry and store missiles inside its frame and reduce the drag when traveling at speeds, which leads us nicely into this fighter's weapon systems. First on the hit list is the standard single target high damage moderate homing capabilities of the QAAM. Head tracking air to air missiles. Good for taking out other fighters in close proximity as long as you're lined up correctly on your targets. Second is the first, un first of the unlockables, the XSDB homing bomb. After dropping it, it locks onto the designated target and guides itself with the intent to penetrate deeply before exploding, causing massive damage to the target, more often than not completely annihilating it. In addition, this baby can lock onto up to four targets at once 
and release four bombs simultaneously. Lastly is the 8AAM missile, or as I like to call them, the BAM missiles. These babies use drop pods rather than are stored inside the aircraft's frame and can fire up to all eight missiles in one go. Although slow and not very manoeuvrable, these are good at medium range for taking out groups of fighters before they get too close. Formation bombers and other slow moving airborne targets that can't easily maneuver out of their way are perfect prey for this weapon. However, I do not recommend this for the third mission, simply because, so I don't recommend this for the third mission, simply because the aircraft that you're fighting against get in close, get in tight, uh, and these missiles are not good for close air-to-air -air combat. They need to be at a distance and they need to be flying in a straight. You will find that you will miss constantly with these, so instead, Go for the QAAM missiles instead. Okay, back to the script. Last thing to note about the BAM missiles is that it likes to shoot all eight missiles in one go. So using your head tracking, you'll multi-lock onto a single target for maximum impact. And every single one of these will miss. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah, well that's it. I wasn't too impressed with the BAM missiles or the AAM missile, despite the fact that it does have the uh, possibility or potential to do maximum devastation or impact to the enemy airplanes. But unless you're traveling from behind them and they're traveling away from you, they are going to miss. This, this has very poor homing abilities onto it. That's why I personally prefer the QAAM missiles that's got higher homing abilities and is more likely to hit your targets and miss them. All right. And that's about it for the comprehensive review of Ace Combat VR. There is still the limited of free flight mode and the air show left to talk about. Also, something about a non-VR campaign I heard about. Apparently, the missile cam is supposed to be quite good. Or so I've been told. But we're here for the VR content here. <laughs> now, the reason that I said that a free flight mode is limited is because it's not the full free flight that I've seen in other simulators. There is no takeoff, no landing or interaction with other pilots, dummy targets, uh, or anything there to destroy. You start off in the air, and you have the option of flying over the three maps, the sea island, flat plains, or mountain above the clouds. There might not be much to it, but you can finally give your eyes a treat, whether, whether you're at 11,000 feet, or base running, rushing through the valleys between the mountains, trying out all sorts of maneuvers you want to play around with. Uh, sorry, so yeah, let's get that paper out. <laughs> sorry, that paper left, got left behind me there. Yeah, so I, I was gonna say, with the free flight, as I said, there isn't much to it at the moment, apart from just flying over the maps, and that seems to be it. But if you like to just chill out, relax, and have a look at the environment around you. I mean, I tend to like fly upside down and then look up, look up at the ground, or just practice some maneuvers. On the third map, as I said, there are like valleys between the mountains that you can just fly in between and see uh, see how fast you can go. And I mean, it, it is kind of a relaxing moment, and you have your like Top Gear, Top Gun um, music playing in the background, and uh, just chill out and relax and have a good flight. Although, for those action junkies out there, there isn't much for you in there. This is just sure, purely flying and enjoyment of the flights. Hmm. Okay. Okay, sorry. Back to the script now. <laughs> Finally, the air show, you will find yourself on the deck of the aircraft carrier watching as the other pilots launch and perform aerial maneuvers. The captain will give you a general rundown, including some information of the maneuvers they are playing out, while you select the next pattern or just leave it alone for them to do their own thing. 
There is also several spots on the deck that you can choose to stand on using your control pad. Uh, and yeah, and that's pretty much it really. I mean, I mean, it's good just watching the airplanes as they fly by and the commander giving you some information on each and each maneuvers. Um, and I said you can stand from several steps. And that's really it for the uh, for the uh, uh, the air show. There's not much to it unless you just like watching airplanes fly by. And with that brings us to the end of the comprehensive review and guide for Ace Combat. As I said earlier, that there have been rumours of an up and coming DLC for Ace Combat that may include extending the VR mode. That would be really awesome if that happened. And as I said, I would definitely keep an eye out to eye out for that and keep you guys up to date if such a thing unfolds. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed creating this. Ah uh, yes, and that as I said is that that's the end of the comprehensive review. Yeah. My personal thoughts on this? I loved it. I really did love it. I loved the moment when I took off for the first time on the aircraft carrier. I could like feel the engine vibration, or was that the controller vibrating? Um, the takeoff, the first time you go into the air and just maneuver around. This game does not hold your hands. Warning, fair warning for you guys, it does not hold your hands. If you're new to VR, you will get motion sickness. If you get motion sickness at all, you will get the motion sickness because you will find that you will be spiraling around, dancing backwards, forwards, left, right, center, up, down, flying into the fray as you are constantly look, looking at the enemies. This is action packed, fast speed, high area, high altitude, high octane, mayhem. And we love it. So first, just remember, it does not hold your hands. <laughs> uh, so for all the avid P uh, VR enthusiasts out there, I'm sure you're going to have a, a great time playing this. There are no comfort options on this. We just go straight, full out, pilot combat mode. Perfect. We love it like this. This is how VR is meant to be. It's not for everyone because some people might not be able to handle it. But for those of us that you can, bring it on. <laughs> okay, right. Again, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed creating this. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. There are many more things that are coming out. There's lots of games that are coming out. Lots of more reviews are coming out. If you like this style of review, please comment down in below. Uh, if you want more, if you want more of these style reviews on different games, please let me know your thoughts. What games do you want me to do reviews on, uh, or games you want me to gameplay? Do you prefer that I spend my time creating these sort of reviews, or do you want me to spend more time doing uh, live stream broadcasts? So your thoughts, your opinions matter and will be much helpful. And again, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys out there.